Good morning, everybody. I think I've, I hit the wrong thing. All right, I think we're all set. All right. <laughs> uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we are going to be playing harmonica here for the next thirty minutes or so, uh, and you should go to our website, mammothgardens.com, and click on the harmonica girl. She will escort you into our daily schedule along with all of the sheet music. And today we are playing. Let me double check. Simple Gifts will be our warm-up, and then we are playing uh, Puff the Magic Dragon, because who doesn't want to play that song on Diatonic Harmonica? And then we will also play Smoke Gets in Your Eye. We've played that 10,000 times, and we're going to keep playing it until Gary can play it. And so, um, it's coming along. And I missed yesterday. I missed playing. I played no harmonica yesterday, so I feel like... I feel like I'm a bad person, but we're going to remedy that by playing it today. Um, let me make sure the link is working correctly. Opens up. Uh, I put the pucker up uh, image on the front of the post today because it's funny. All right. We're on harmonic lesson number 134. Isn't that something? Since August. HTTPS uh, mammothgardens.com. Harmonica girl pops up. Go grab that image. So they match, matchy matchy. Puff her up and tweet. All right. So <laughs> if you're watching your Twitter feed, which nobody does, and they see that, they'll be like, "What the heck is Mugert up to?" All right. All right. Let's see. All right, let's see. What else is going on? We got Twitter set up. We got Harmonica set up. We got the website working. We have nobody showing up yet. Everybody's uh, taking their sweet time getting here. We're supposed to already be playing Harmonica. So if one of you <laughs> is logged in, we'll say, we can hear you, uh, then we'll be in good shape. It appears I'm broadcasting. I just can never tell if the sound is coming through. <laughs> All right, Diane is in. She and I live in Denver. It does look like an amazing day. It's partly cloudy right now, but it looks like those clouds are going to burn off. We had a, about a perfect temperature, upper 60s today. I'm very excited. Um, let's see, Marsha says, good morning. Hope that roof project worked out. Yeah, we met with the contractor. The whole board of, board of the condo association was there. Uh, everything looks pretty solid, you guys. And so um, I believe as... Uh, a member of the board, I'm going to turn it over to the management and let them take care of it. <laughs> so yeah, our, our roof is a, probably 30 years old up there. It is really beyond time for us to get a new one. And so uh, yeah, there we are. And they're going to do all this chemical stuff and all this work and all this heavy duty lifting. And, and we're like, good. Uh, that sounds like something I want you to do. I'm happy to pay for it to have you guys take care of that. So we're we're in good shape. Uh, Evelyn is in. Uh, let's see. Sandy says, afternoon, 63 degrees up there. In, oh, humid. <laughs> oh, that's right. Those of you guys that have humidity, you are headed into that time of year, right? Ah, goodness. All right, let's get going. Uh, let's get into... I know that's the problem with winter. Winter's cold and you know, hot summer is humid. Um, in Denver, um, it's pretty much perfect every day. So let's see. Uh, harmonica. Um, we are playing... What are we playing for our warm-up today? Is it Simple Gifts Day? Today is... Uh, yeah, Simple Gifts Day. So grab your uh, Simple Gifts. I rearranged all of my harmonica music. I didn't play any harmonica, but I sure rearranged my music. And so I am... Uh, now trying to figure out where everything is. Uh, you know, you never want to clean your desk off, right? Simple gifts, diatonic. Uh, key of C. Um, let's see. Pauline made it in. Good to see up uh, sunny up in Northern California. And Don, of course, is in. Uh, mighty good to be back, right? So maybe yesterday you took time to play harmonica on your own. Maybe you didn't. Doesn't matter, right? Whatever you did, whatever you chose to do was the right thing. And um, um, I started following on, and I'll tell you, here's the story before we get started. Uh, I started following on Twitter um, a, a thing called Stoicism, which I think I had heard of before, but and I knew because I studied uh, Roman history quite a bit, I knew sort of the major philosophers, but I never really, I, you're, when you're studying uh 
uh, Roman and medieval history in college, you're really talking about talking about the, uh, uh, you know, who murdered who and what war led to what this and that. And, you know, it's, it's all very uh, people. It's, it's unfortunately people and events oriented and not so much idea oriented. And so it's been fun to follow, uh, get, get back into stoicism. And the message is you just do the best you do with you and you just let everything else be it what it is you know and uh, um, so if you practice yesterday and played harmonica good for you if you didn't practice and play harmonica yesterday good for you okay we work on the things we can change when they, we work on the things that we are in control of those things we are not in control of we let them be so we're about to play simple gifts you're in control of it let's see how you do one two three There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, simple gifts. Kind of pushing the pushing the tempo a tiny bit. Hopefully, um, um, after you know after Diane's discussion about, hey man, I was just playing a little bit slower than I, than I wanted to play when I was playing with some other people. Um, I think one of the things that we should do as a group community is. We play everything slow, but every now and then we need to push the pace on some stuff. And usually, obviously, you push the pace on a song that you're reasonably familiar with. And we've started cycling through the songs enough now where you're probably getting pretty comfortable with a few of these songs, especially the diatonic songs. And uh, so let's start, um, uh, not always, of course, but when, you know, pushing, pushing the tempo just a little bit, seeing if we can't get... Uh, Pushing tempo is usually about confidence, right? It's not usually about your ability to play the tune. You know you can play the tune, um, but can you play it at a faster speed, at a louder volume, with a little bit more subtlety and grace in each note, with a little hints of bends around the edges of your notes, that type of thing. Uh, so we start using as many skills that we've studied in isolation to bring those into to, um, 
the sheet music and into your final song. I mean, honestly, if you took that tune and just really got it solid, um, y you could play that for anybody. That's a nice piece of music. And, um, um, you know, people will recognize the tune. They're like, I know that tune. I don't know why I know that tune, but I know that tune. <laughs> and you say something, well, it's from Aaron Copland's New World Symphony. And they're like, oh, you are a serious musician. And, you know, that's how we take care of that stuff. Uh, let's see. John made it in 63, light rain out on the out, out in the Midwest, 63, light rain, right, John? You'll take it. <laughs> it's usually when you're when you're uh, in the in the agricultural business, there's two types of rain, right? Uh, there's the rain that washes everything out and there's the rain that brings the hail that what that destroys everything. <laughs> uh, what you want is a light rain. You want it to be 63 degrees. So John's having a perfect day out there. Uh, good to see you, John. Christine, 48 degrees and sunny up in Bozeman. They're having a better day than we're having here in Denver, and that's incorrect. Bozeman is supposed to be cold and snowy. All right. <laughs> Glad you're here, Christine. Um, the scales. Let's go do grab our scales. Um, I must have put that in a folder called resources. I did. All right. Diatonic notes in C. There we go. All right. Remember, uh, my only note on this page is meow. <laughs> so on your fours, fives, and sixes, and maybe your sevens, um, tight. Start by blowing and drawing tight, and then loosening up your 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 kissing muscles. So when you think about kissing, you can kiss really hard, right? Those muscles are tight, 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 and then they loosen, or you can kiss real soft. Right, and all of those, the, so so those inner kissing muscles are exactly what you're using to bend notes. Um, bending is not required, but bending will make you sound better um, because you're able to shape the quality of the note just a little bit. You can overshape them, which is what my problem is, is that all of a sudden I'm like bending them way too much. But you can bend your note just a smidge, and it gets a more vocal effect to it, um, and um, will give you more uh, command over your harmonica. Again, not required, um, but it is something that you might want to be thinking about working on uh, to give your harmonica the prettiest sound that you can get from them. When I listen to um, harmonic players who really know what they're doing, they are really just slightly modestly bending almost every note, you know, adjusting the overall timbre of that note uh, so that it, it has a human feel to it. And that's what you're working on when you do your scales. Do it straight the first time and the second time to try to bend those draw notes. That'll get you where you're starting to, to have that happen for you. Once you get it a little bit, then it's easy after that. But it's getting the first bends in and learning to, to control your mouth. Uh, to get the first bends in, that's the hard part. It is your kissing muscles tight and then loose. Your tongue is also upper, you know, not all the way to the top of your mouth, but higher, and then drops down um, as it's, your mouth relaxes. So it's mm, wah, mm, wah, and you should be getting the meow sound. And that's what you're after with that. All right, first time through straight, and the second time try to grab your meows. One, two, three, four. That's overbending. That's doing too much bending, but uh, but um, uh, so your goal is to bend them just a little bit, right? Just get a little bit of a shape onto that. And that's and and you are altering the pitch a little bit. So if you had a tuner stuck to your face or stuck to your harmonica, it would show that you're kind of dropping the pitch and bringing it back up when you are bending the note. And again, it is an advanced technique, and you take your time to work on it. Don't feel like you're a bad person if you can't do it. <laughs> um, 
Uh, by the way, you're playing harmonica. You already are a bad harp person, so so uh, don't 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 feel like you need uh, you have any standards to uphold at this point. From uh, let's do the A minor scale from made draw six for two times through one, two, ready, play. <laughs> really trying to mess around with that um all right there's your scales that sounds pretty good um we are playing i think we're doing puff the magic dragon right we're doing puff the magic dragon today um let's go grab that dink, dink, dink. Um, let's see. I have no notes on my piece of paper at all. So let's think about, so the whole thing riding around sixes and sevens, um, we sneak up to an eight, but for the most part, five, sixes and sevens. So again, if you're teaching somebody, teach them the first five songs that we do every week, you know, and teach them those. And then our song from Monday what was, um, reasonably playable on top of spaghetti uh puff the magic dragon again is sort of next level playing so once you get comfortable with four fives and sixes and an occasional seven then you want to get comfy with five sixes and sevens and an occasional eight so this might be that next level of music that you would teach somebody um and almost everybody knows how puff the magic dragon goes um and um yeah so there's that um thoughts on the song those of you from uh, uh they're a little bit older than me this was a standard for everybody saying it uh they they they, they claim they insist uh, uh peter yarrow who wrote it uh it insists it's not about um drugs and so we'll take him at his word uh and eventually um it became a popular song in a lot of you know elementary schools and stuff were doing it uh and so and as you no, it's super sad that it ends with uh, the dragon going and hiding back in his cave they had to add a fifth verse where uh, jackie paper's daughter shows up and and gets puff out of the cave <laughs> to make it less sad um so um i don't have that on your piece of paper because i think it is spurious and wrong i think this is a sad song and so uh, uh that's my, that's my opinion on this one let's play it two times through you're supposed to play it four times through that's uh, at least three times too many so uh, let's play it twice through and um see how we do um start with the blow seven one, two, three, four.
has a bad chord at the end. Um, there. Yeah, probably a low chord. <laughs> Do a one, two, three, four at the end. One, two, three, four. <laughs> All right, there we go. Pretty good, right? It actually plays very nicely. Um, I am trying as I'm going through there to pay attention to the lyrics because lots of the lyrics have, you know, double syllables and stuff. And uh, so I was trying to pay attention to lyric number four. But if you are reading lyric number two or three, obviously play it that way. Um, and um, yeah, that brings back to, was it 60s? 1962, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I apparently wrote it off of a poem from 1959 by Leonard Lipton. That I did not know when I wrote this out. So good. That's a lovely, lovely second level type um, diatonic song when you're teaching somebody to play. Um, and, you know, give them that one. Everybody likes that song. <laughs> All right. Um, I know what I can do. I'll put that there. And then everything will be perfect. All right. Um, finally, oh, no, let's go grab our chromatic scales those of you with the diatonic only you're good for the day i will see you uh tomorrow and then for those of you guys who have made the commitment to chromatic which every harmonica player should make the commitment to both of these right each instrument has its strengths and weaknesses and we really want uh to exploit the strengths and uh overcome the weaknesses Tuesday, today's Wednesday, we're playing the D major scale. So measure number three, we play it two times through. This is one of those you really got to pay attention to. We get our money's worth when it comes to pressing the button. So line three from the top, two times through. One, two, three, four. Those of you guys who are working on reading just the standard notation without using the tablature, that shows you how difficult this instrument can be. Um, so, you know, a lot of times people are like, oh, harmonica, that's a toy. No, it's not. <laughs> There's really going to be a lot of work to memorize all of those notes on your harmonica. And uh, um, so, yeah, every time I play that, I'm like, I am never not going to use tablature. There's <laughs> way too much work uh, without it. All right. Let's go grab, oh, all of a sudden I feel my, my lungs opened up. You know, you didn't play yesterday, so all of a sudden my lungs are all tightened. And uh, all right, today, this is it. This is our moment. Smoke gets in your eye. I have messed this up 100% of the times we play this, and so I am going to get this right today. <laughs> all right, it's page, it's 16, 17, 18, 19, and it just eats my lunch every time. I'm going to get it right today, you guys. Uh, we play this song um, one time through right nice and slow beat it says 80 we usually play about 60 70 somewhere in there not fast um and then be focused in on when you get into that second page that things are really um un they just don't feel right <laughs> here for some reason let's make it happen today's the day one two three four
I got it closer. I messed up the beginning and <laughs> got the middle pretty, pretty, pretty tight. Uh, I'm gonna play it one more time. One more time. It's gonna be the moment. Minus one, <laughs> Marcia wrote, minus one is so hard. Isn't it funny? You have this big instrument and you're like, all right, everything, everything, you know. <laughs> You just have to blow. Minus one is so hard to get it smooth and clean and pretty. Partly because you could really bend that note, right? And so um, it uh, is very floppy in your harmonica. And I think when you start on a minus one, you're just, you're like, oh God, I'm going to get this thing right. But yes, I agree, Marsha. I think minus one is <laughs> super hard on any of these things. Because uh, you're trying to get pretty tones, and it sort of sounds like a cow going, right? You know, like, nah, that's not what that's not what I'm after. All right. I have struggled and read and tried to find a meaningful way to create a sound chamber here. Um, and what I notice is, uh, and I don't know how to say her name. She holds the harmonica way down here and somehow is able to get her up here to do this. So I haven't quite figured out what the heck she's doing I'm gonna I'm gonna study her some more. I'm gonna figure out a way, best way, the best way to hold the harmonica. They all say just do this, but then you don't really I don't know you don't have a good sound chamber. So I don't know. <laughs> That's my problem right now. Uh, measure one, one time through. Let's get it right this time. Let's have Gary get it right. One, two, three, four. Getting close. I don't know why I fight that so much. All right. 
There you go. You got uh, 20 minutes left on your own to play through your repertoire and get as solid as you can. Because um, someday somebody's going to call you up and want a harmonica concert uh, um, at whatever the fanciest place in your town is, and you're going to be the person they call. So I will see all of you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful afternoon. I'll see some of you in ukulele. I'll see the rest of you guys tomorrow. And. Um, Let's keep it moving forward. <laughs> um, I do have tons of music that I'm going to be tabbing out um, over the next few months. And so stick with it and tell that, that let people know what you're up to um, and that you're getting pretty good at this. And uh, I have uh, no ulterior motive here. I, um, <laughs> I just want to I'll get better playing this myself as I'm hoping you're getting better as well. Uh, getting stronger lungs, right? All right, guys. I'm going to pull the plug. Have a wonderful day. I will see you. Manana. Mm -hmm. Evelyn, Pauline, Sandy, Diane. Yeah. Diane says, I really miss those days off. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Thank you. Good to see you guys. Better, better the second time. Oh, good. Good, good, good. All right. Um, oh, my arm. Oh, this is a classical guitar thing. <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. Uh, yeah. I, I was told I'm supposed to use one of these, so I'm using one of them. <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. Arm is fine. Just uh, using it... Um, slide up and down on the guitar. So thanks, Andy. All right, guys. I'll see you a little later. Adios.